Jean Hill became known as the woman in red. Well, I saw the flash of light and puff of smoke from the nose behind the fence at the very instant that Kennedy's head was blown off. The Newmans were the family who hit the ground to shield their children from bullets that killed the president. And we turned and pushed our two children down the ground. We, we covered our children. Aubrey Reich was the ambulance driver who placed the president's body in a coffin. You can just feel the pressure of a jagged edge on your hand, you know, as I put my hand behind his head, you know, put my arm on him. James LaBelle was the detective in the white hat handcuffed to the alleged assassin when Oswald was murdered. Of course, there's been many comments on that. There's been some people say, well, you can see he's the only one that wasn't in on it then. You know, he was the only one surprised. Everybody else standing very calm. They knew what was going to happen. These are crucial witnesses to one moment in history that overshadowed the rest of their days. to find some things out about the story. Before that day, teaching was the lifestyle Jean Hill had chosen, and a classroom is still where she's content to be. So we want to know what comes next. But ordinary people like Hill have had trouble returning to their normal lives. The curious still finds them. I've lived in the same house for 30 years with a listed phone number, and only the government can't find me. Everyone else can. Every researcher and every kook. They come out of the woodwork to find you. May I have your name, please, sir? Bill Newman. Uh, this is Mrs. Newman. Bill and Gail Newman didn't intend to make history when they came to see the president, but they were the first assassination witnesses interviewed on Dallas TV. Over here, in front of the Turf Run Pass on Elm Street. I thought the bullet itself on that third shot was coming right over the top of our heads. You know, I can remember seeing President Kennedy go across the, the car seat into Mrs. Kennedy's lap. I can remember her saying, oh my God, no, they've shot Jack. And, you know, I can remember looking back and seeing her on the trunk of the car. I was terrified uh, after the shots, and we were down on the ground. It seemed like everybody either had a camera or a gun. Crowds waited outside Parkland Hospital for word on the president. But ambulance driver Aubrey Reich was inside next to Jackie Kennedy. But she had nobody with her. It, what was the most sad thing you ever seen in your life? You know, seeing that lady sitting there and, you know, nobody comes to you know you. Secret service agents told him to get his ambulance ready to move the president. You know, then they told us, you know, you put him in the casket before we're leaving. So we picked him up, and well, when I put my hand underneath his head to lift his head up, you know, to get my hand underneath his neck, well, he was bleeding real bad through the sheets. You know. Secret Service escort now lifting the bomb casket off the truck. The president's body was flown to Washington for an autopsy. Later, what Reich had observed about the president's body became critical information for conspiracy researchers who suspected the body was altered and moved to a different coffin. You know, when they unloaded him into the ambulance there, it was still a bronze casket. The casket is now being put into a gray Navy ambulance. Then uh, Paul O'Connor, who was at the Thurban, said when they took him out of the casket, it was a gray, pinkish colored casket. Researchers use Reich's memories as evidence of a cover-up. He said, oh, nobody's going to be shooting in there. You're just being a little melodramatic or something. Dallas police well, detective Jim LaBelle's memories are also critical for researchers. Okay. It turns out he made a terrible joke with Lee Harvey Oswald that came true. When I was handcuffing myself to him, I told him, I said, just in jest, I said, Lee, if anybody shoots at you, uh, I hope they're as good a shot as you are. Meaning, of course, that they hit him and not me. And he kind of laughed. It's the only time I ever heard him laugh during the whole uh, time he was in custody. No, I've not been charged with that. In fact, nobody has said that to me yet. LaBelle said police had received threats against Oswald's life before they tried to move him to the county jail. But he thought the police basement would be safe. Do you have anything to say in your defense? There's a shot. Oswald has a shot. 
Nearly 30 years later, conspiracy researchers keep interrupting Lavelle's retirement for answers to the mystery of why Jack Ruby killed Oswald. When we was leaving at jail with him, I told him, I said, Jack, I've known you a good many years and you've never done anything to uh, uh, hurt a police officer, but I said, you didn't do us any favor when you shot Oswald. And he said, well, Lavelle, all I wanted to do was be a hero. And he said, I think I just fouled things up good. And I said, well, you can say that again. You'll take them off. Huh? You'll take them off, right? Well, see, if I go, I don't even have a key with me. <laughs> LaBelle has turned down offers to sell the handcuffs and guns he wore that day. And he's tried to resist the spotlight. Hi. 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 Okay. Nearly 30 years later, Gene Hill has accepted the strange fame that comes to assassination witnesses. Thank you. You're welcome. She sells her story. She wrote her own book, The Last Dissenting Witness. She's still a teacher, but now she's booked as a speaker and author every weekend. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. See you next. She says this isn't about money. It's about being believed. It hurt tremendously, being a school teacher particularly, to have on the front page Warren Commission called Gene Hill a liar. Um, I, and I, I keep saying, with this book, I will be vindicated. Government investigators never took her story seriously when she said she saw the man who killed Kennedy. But people who buy her book consider her an expert. She's no longer Jean Hill, the teacher. She's the woman in red.